been behind and created gumming bank, lend money to the poor women. But alongside of it, as I was doing the microfinance in Bangladesh, I also started noticing the problems poor people, particularly poor women, faced. <coughs> and there are plenty of those problems, health problems, uh, problems of uh, education, problems of technology, problems of agriculture, you name it, all around it, there's uh, problems and problems. And the, every time I try to focus on a problem and see how to solve that problem, I come up with a business idea and create a business to solve the problem. And in the process, I became a sort of a serial company maker. I keep on making companies after companies. I created more than 50 different companies. And each one aimed at a particular problem to see if I can bring a solution to the problem in a business way. The reason I tried to focus it in a business way because these problems always were addressed in a charity way. Some local charities, some, some people helping a few people, or government trying to help people, again in a charity way. And my feeling was charity thing works, definitely it works, it has a tremendous impact in people's lives. But one shortcoming of charity is charity money goes, it does the work, but the money doesn't come back. So I thought if I could transform this into some kind of a business way of doing it, same thing. Then the business money goes out, does the job, and comes back. And I send it back again to do the same job again and again and again. But it never stops because it's a business. It's a sustainable business. And that's what I tried to do in every single case. I created one company, among many others, to focus on the problem of electricity in the villages of Bangladesh. 70% of the people of Bangladesh do not have electricity. So it's all darkness and kerosene lamps and other kind of things and all over Bangladesh in the villages. So I thought maybe this is, this is not going to disappear very soon and uh, we just, just can't wait around. This gives us an opportunity to bring renewable energy in the village. Why don't we bring solar energy in the village? We have plenty of sunshine in Bangladesh. So that idea grabbed me. I created a company, solar energy company, Grameen Energy, or Grameen Shakti, and started selling solar energy or solar home system. And it's very expensive compared to people who like to expect for energy purposes. Nobody was interested because they never saw such a thing. So it was such a hard thing to sell two or three solar home system for the whole month. But we never gave up. We are always hoping maybe we'll come to the level we can sell five solar home systems per month. That would be a great improvement in our work. Fifteen years later, today, we sell thousand solar home systems per day. And we are just about to reach our first million solar home system within this year. So that's the kind of speed it picks up. It's a business. It covers its cost, but solves the problem of energy for the people. We use the same technology, same methodology of marketing to bring improved cooking stone. Many of you are familiar. One of the major causes of death to you of women in the villages, particularly in Bangladesh, and similarly in other countries, is the respiratory diseases because she's cooking all the time in front of this traditional stove, which creates fume. And she inhales it, her children inhales it, the children are always around the mother. And this becomes a respiratory disease, permanent, passing on from one generation to the next. So there are improved cooking stoves available for many, many years, but it doesn't get anywhere. The government tries to promote it with big campaign posters and so on. Who cares? So we thought, why don't we make this into a business? So we created a business out of it. We want to sell this into a cooking stove. And we say, you just give us a call. Here is the number. We come and install it right away. And you use it. If you don't like it, you take it back. If you like it, pay us. Then this is the price you pay. And so it's very cheap. It doesn't cost much. We produce in a mass production 
to just print it, install it within an hour, see our stock, go ahead. Now again, that is flourishing, people want it. And one neighbor tells another neighbor and tells another neighbor, everybody wants it, make the phone call, you got it, that's it. So again, we created a business out of it. So business kind of grabbed me. Why can't we create business to solve problems? And I look at the way, when I talk about this to other people, they cannot catch it. Why should you create a business to solve problems? We create business to make money. And that's what the business is supposed to be. The mission of business is to maximize profit. That's what the whole world does. So when I look around, it looks like the whole world is going, is a kind of money is the king, and we chase money. We are all money chasers. We all go and chase money. Not only we chase money, money has become an obsession because that's the only game in town. In our tax stores and everywhere, we don't think about anything else but money. So money sometimes has become addiction. We don't know why we are making money, but still we can't stop making money because that's the only way we can carry on with our, ourselves. I understand money, making money as a means. But I don't understand making money as an end. You make your first million, okay, you did it. Then you make your second million, I don't know why you did it. You make, you make your tenth million, why you did it. You make your first billion, why? <laughs> so I said, why can't we create a business world or economic world where human beings are trans uh, interpreted in a proper way, not interpreted as a kind of money-making robots. That's all they do in the world. They just chase money. One thing for sure, the economists didn't do a good job. They interpreted human beings as one-dimensional being. All they do is one thing, make money. As a real human being, are multi-dimensional. They want to do many things at the same time. When I tell this to the economist, they say, well, why don't you step outside of business world, become a philanthropist, and express your other thoughts? I said, no. As a human being, I want to play the whole human being inside the economic world. Why should I step outside? I said, we are selfish as a human being. At the same time, we are selfless people. Every one of us has both sides into it. Why can't we express it in the business world? In a selfish part, I make money for myself. And in the selfless part, I use the money to impact on other people's life. Economists tell us making money is the only incentive in the world. That's why people run something, because that's the only incentive. I said, no, that's the wrong thing. Making money is one of the many incentives. What are the other incentives? I said, making other people happy is also a happiness. Why can't we chase that? Why can't you include that in your economic theory? That yes, you can make yourself happy making money. Also, you can make yourself by making other people happy. That's happiness too. That's an incentive too. Then I look back on what I was doing. I said, that's the kind of business actually that I was doing. Creating business to solve problems. And that's what makes me happy. I didn't want to make money out of any of these companies. I don't want any single share of any of these companies. But I created them. Then I gave a name to this kind of thing. I said, we should include it into the economic structure, conceptual framework. And this is what, what I call social business. Non-dividend company to solve social problems. I said, then we'll have a world with two kinds of businesses, and we have a choice. Either we do this, or do that, or do both. I said, most likely we'll do both. That's what is more fun. I make myself happy by making money, I make myself happy by solving everybody else's problem. And that's what the human beings are all about. We are full of creative power. Endless capacity each human being has. But today, all the creative power, all the technology that all the human beings have, what is the use we make it for? We make it to make money. And that's it. I said, why can't you use the same creative power to solve problems? Through the business way, social business way. And I thought this is a social business. And I was doing it. Then came the famous story that I met Frank Gabriel in Paris. And we 
talked about what I do, and I invited him to do something in Bangladesh, and he agreed. And I explained what a social business is. I said, let's do some social business in Bangladesh. He really agreed. After that, we created this Jameen Danone company. And the pro problem that we focus on this particular company is to focus on the malnutrition among the children. Children are malnourished in Bangladesh, like many other countries. 46% of the children of Bangladesh are malnourished. So we created this special kind of yoga. And it is the creativity of Danone who could bring that thing happen. Make this tiny cup of yoga, brought all the micronutrients packed into it, vitamin, iron, zinc, iodine, all the things they need. It made it very cheap, made it very delicious, and start selling it to the kids. They love it. They love the taste. And in the process, they change their health condition. And the company covers its cost. And that's what the social business is all about. Danone doesn't want to make money out of it. Gavin doesn't want to make money out of it. The company makes money, money stays with the company. That's the social business model. And then another company, Veolia. We are joint venture with Veolia. Water is a problem everywhere. So we solved this problem of creating a social business, small, tiny little social business in cluster of villages to bring clean drinking water to the people in the villages. They get it right there. And the company sells it. And it covers its cost. And that's the solution of the terrible problem Bangladesh faces on arsenic from contamination in our water and the pollution on our surface water. So we have no scope. Now we created this opportunity. Once the social business works in a tiny little framework, in a prototype, then you can replicate as much as you can. Do. Today I'm very happy to announce that the Gamin Kelly Technical Microfinance Foundation, which was created four years back, this is the fourth year celebration going on. Yesterday, they, in their board meeting, they announced the creation of a social business fund, which will invest in social businesses created by anybody in the third world countries and as an investment, as a loan. So we can create a lot of these social businesses if you want. Today we work with the joint ventures, with BSM, to produce mosquito nets for stopping malaria. We work with Adidas to produce shoes. I challenge them to make these shoes very cheap, affordable to the poorest people. And they asked me how cheap should it be. I said, under one euro. And they were shocked that Adidas shoes under one euro. I said, yeah, if you want to sell it to the poor people, that's the price point you need. They worked two years very hard to make that happen, and it happened. Today, the producer in India, under one year of selling. Because health has a regain. If you go careful, you're attacked by parasitic diseases. So if you're willing to choose, you at least save yourself from parasitic diseases. So that's another company. So we have series of those companies. Then, uh, last point I would like to make here. I hear the very strange things, even in France. I thought it was a strange thing in USA. That's the impression I had until today. If you create a company, particularly a public company, or a private listed company, or even a private company, your obligation under law is to make money, make profit. I don't know how far it stretches itself that you have to profit, make profit. I said, yes, social businesses make profit, but I don't want to take profit. That's what I'm saying. Am I violating the law? They said, you are not sure how you are violating the law. Even if I don't want to take profit, if that's a violation of law, I think we don't need that law. We need to change that law. So yes, you can create a law where you make a company to change people's lives, to solve problems without taking any dividend. If such a law exists today, the other kind, that I will appeal to you to make that changes as soon as possible. Because young people love the idea of social business. Because they have the creativity, they have the power. And I remind them that you are the most powerful young generation in the whole human history. Nobody like yourself have ever been into this planet before. Because you came with enormous technology in your hand. That technology never existed before. Today you are, you are connected to everybody around the world. 
your Facebooks, your Twitters, your cell phones, your internet, your iPads, your, your name it, God knows how many other things, I don't know. <laughs> but you, are, you have access to information, you have access to knowledge, you don't wait for your mother to answer your question, or your father to answer your question, or your teacher to tell you what it is. You Google it, you go to the Wikipedia, you know before they know what this is all about. So that power, they're itching to use it. They don't know what it is they want to use. When I talk about social business, immediately they say, ah, this is what I can do. I can create a beautiful design of a social business to solve this problem. And that's what we need to do, get the engaged. Today's young generation is not engaged. The previous generation, they fought, fought for socialism, they fought for this, they fought for that. Our young generation fought for independence in our countries. Those things are over. What this young generation do? They create a completely new world. And this is in their capacity to do that. I hope they will be convinced that they can create a world that we can be all proud of. Thank you very much. Si vous voulez poser des questions, euh, d'ici à l'arrivée des deux ministres, c'est le moment. Si vous avez toujours rêvé de poser une question au professeur Yunus, c'est maintenant que je vais. Il y en a une là. 